QLDraw's main functions is to convert bitmap images into vector graphics. Bitmaps use pixels, essentially dots, to create an image, whereas vectors use lines and curves. Vector graphics are more ideal for printing and color separation, as well as being able to scale graphics, whereas bitmap images are better for photo editing. First, you'll want to import a graphic. So in our case, we're going to import our burger guy, which is a transparent PNG. And if you zoom in, you will see that it is a pixelated bitmap image, where it's using these dots to essentially create the image. Now, what we want to do is we want to convert this to a vector. And how we do that is we come up to the trace bitmap, which is also available in our bitmaps dropdown. And we're going to come to outline trace, which is a little bit more advanced than the quick or center trace. And from here, we can choose one of these different typing trace methods. In this case, it's pretty much clip art. So we'll select clip art. And we're actually going to click reduce bitmap because it doesn't really matter what the size is, because once it's converted to a vector, we can then resize it without any issues. From here, QuellDraw is actually going to convert the bitmap to a vector by tracing it. And again, we have many different controls here to choose how much detail, smoothing, and quarter smoothness we want to allow. Uh, by simply moving these toggles around, we will adjust the image. Again, here's our original, here's our finished. And a cool thing is we actually can zoom in, and from here you can start to see how different they look as far as this is a nice line and curve, which is this is still using tiny little pixels to create the image. We also have the different trace results details around here, which gives us many different uh, information as far as colors, nodes, and curves. Once we're happy with the look of the vector, we can click OK. Now from here, we've actually created a second layer of the original bitmap. So if we actually grab this and move it, you will see that the original is right there. And again, we can zoom in and you will see that this is again our vector using nice lines and curves, which is this is using again pixels to create the image. Now that we've converted this image to a vector, uh, we can get it out of the way and go ahead and delete our original. We'll bring this back over. And another common thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to ungroup this vector. And how you do that is you're gonna right click on it or you can come over to Object, Group, Ungroup Objects. Now by ungrouping them, essentially we are allowing for the vector to be separated into smaller paths, essentially uh, amounts of color in an area. So from here we can actually double click and you'll start to see all of these little uh, essentially anchor points which act as nodes. And if we actually come over here to our Pick Tool, and then actually, if you hold down on it, you can use the freehand pick tool, which will allow you to make a direct selection within the object. So let's say we wanna select this arm, which we can do right there. And by double clicking it, we actually can access the nodes, which we can then readjust to manipulate the artwork if we want. Uh, again, this is a bit more advanced and you're not gonna do it very often. Um, but again, by just grabbing and dragging, you can change the way that the artwork looks. Now that we've actually separated the object into smaller objects, you can then decide to start changing the colors within the artwork. Uh, from here, we're actually going to make sure we're on the selection. And over here, we have many different properties open, which we can choose from here or in the window what exact ones are available. One of the main ones you're going to want to use are the object properties. The object properties are going to allow us to change the color of this object. In this case, we're actually gonna change it from RGB color mode to CMYK, and we're gonna make this 100% yellow to make it easily definable when we're separating colors. And there you go. Now it's 100% yellow. And it's really that easy. In order to be able to manipulate a vector, you first must make sure that it is traced and then ungroup it. And from there, you can make adjustments to groups within the actual artwork. Also remember that the side navigation tools are very handy. And if you come to Object Manager, you actually see all of the curves, just like you would in Illustrator, that actually make up this object. If you have any questions about how to convert a bitmap to a vector using CorelDRAW, please do not hesitate contacting us.
Thank you.